everybody welcome or welcome back to my channel this is novel idea and my name is dia and i wanted to go over my uh december reads and just kind of close out the month of december as far as the books that i have read and let you know kind of what's up next and then i will be back very soon with like my top and bottom reads of the year and we will talk about those also so without further ado let's jump right in the first book that i completed for december or for this last part of december was a book called the garden of empire and it's by jt greathouse and it is an Asian inspired uh, high fantasy. It is the follow up to my one of my favorite books from last year called The Hand of the Sun King. This one was not as good as Hand of the Sun King, but I thought it was going to be a duology, and it turns out it's going to be a uh, trilogy. This one has a little bit of middle book syndrome. So Hand of the Sun King is about a young boy who is part of two worlds because of his parentage. And he is raised in the traditions of his father's heritage. And his mother's heritage is taught to him by his grandmother, who is living with them as he grows up. So, um, in Hand of the Sun King, we are basically only getting his point of view. And it's wonderful, it's a great story, wonderful book. This one, um, I'm not a huge war story person and that includes my fantasy novels. So the fantasy novels that I tend to like the best are the ones that just don't have a lot of battles and wars in them. And so this very well may be docked a little bit on my part because of just my personal taste, but it had a lot of battles and we get multiple points of view in this one. So we're not just getting Foolish Kerr, who is the main boy in the, in the Hand of the Sun King, but we are getting a couple of others. The thing that I do appreciate about that is that it really feels great to see some character development. Um, my favorite point of view is one that in the last book, I did not like it all. And in this book, you gradually grow to, to really like and appreciate him and his struggles. And so I really liked that one. So we have about three main points of view that we are with in uh, Garden of Empire. And it ends on a bit of a cliffhanger, on a confusing, not that it itself is confusing, but you just aren't sure what to think or what to believe by the end of the book. So Garden of Empire, JT Great House. Uh, I gave this book an A minus. It's uh, like I said, book two in the Pact and Pattern series. So the next one that I read was Mort, and this is by Terry Pratchett. It is one of many Discworld books, but this is the first of Terry Pratchett's Discworld that focuses on death as the main character. And in this one, we have a young, awkward teenager who is not fitting in very well with his family and his family's business. And so he ends up as an apprentice to death and rides off 
to death's lair and it is so fun. The thing that I really appreciate about Terry Pratchett is just how he really kind of forces you to look at things and examine life a little differently than you probably would normally. They are just snarky and funny and uh, and yet they really do show you some things that if you are willing to look and question, you are going to walk away uh, feeling like you just read a pretty deep novel. And Mort is the teenager, by the way, and um, I just really thoroughly enjoyed it. I gave this book an A also, and I am looking forward to continuing on and reading the rest of the death novels in Discworld. The next book that I completed was Charles Spurgeon's sermon excerpts for Advent reading, and it was called Joy to the World, and I loved every moment of it. Every single moment spent in that book was um, something that made me grapple with how I was viewing something. I just so deeply appreciate when authors do that in a very short period of time. The very last comments, 99% of the time, last two or three sentences that uh, Spurgeon chose to say were usually and what knocked me for a loop and what I was underlining and making uh, notes about in the book. And so again, I just loved it. The next book that I completed was The Lost Metal. This is by Brandon Sanderson. It is the fourth book in the Wax and Wayne series, um, part of the Mistborn world. And so same kind of magic that is in Mistborn. But think of, think of the Wax and Wayne part of Mistborn being like the Mistborn books are like Bible for the Wax and Wayne era. So for us, let's say um, we know about things that happen, but it's like ancient times for them. And so they're just trying to still figure things out and they are trying to understand some things that are going on. I loved this book. I loved it. I'm not a huge Wax and Wayne fan. Um, I really loved Miss Bourne. Wax and Wayne was just a little too flippant for me for the most part. This book was different. It was still snarky. It still had its funny moments, but this book really kind of brought together uh, the two eras. It brought together some l loose hanging threads that were there. I loved it. I just loved it. I thought it was, I thought it was fabulously done. I'm amazed at Brandon Sanderson's thought process, how he comes up with these things how he doesn't write the entire series all at once and yet he seems to have it all in his head. It's, it's just absolutely fascinating. So I really liked this book and again, strong A, almost an A plus for me. Um, I'm trying to think of why I didn't give it an A plus. Nonetheless, the, what my score totaled was an A, a strong A. The next one that I completed was the final book in the Risen Kingdom trilogy by Curtis Craddock. It's called The Last Uncharted Sky, and it also was a great wrap up. Um, I did not love the second book. I really liked the first book. The second book was, was 
it, there wasn't anything bad about it. It just wasn't as good in my opinion. But there were certain things that happened in the second book that I really loved and that I was, ex it made me excited for the third book. And the third book didn't let me down. If you think of like the Three Musketeers and the court intrigue and the defense of the kingdoms uh, through the musketeers uh, defending mainly the the prince or the the heir to the throne and combine it with Victorian steampunk um, it's that sort of a feel that sort of a series unique magic system it has a a blood magic, a shadow magic. It has a, a transfer kind of magic to it. High fantasy, not doing battles so much as doing the skirmishes. Um, more about the, the sneakiness and the intrigue of things than it is about all out war. The friendships, and the loyalties in this book are just cream of the crop. They are amazing. And I just really loved it. I was, I'm anxious for Leslie at the Nerdy Narrative. She's the one that turned me on to this series and I finished it before, <laughs> before she did. And I just want her to finish so that we can talk about it one of the main characters kind of has a debilitating occurrence happen. And it's not the first time that a debilitating occurrence happens in, this, in these books. It's going to last their whole life. But the way that he writes, how they deal with it, how they how they continue to live life to the fullest in spite of i just really loved that so that was another thing that just really sent these books to uh top of the line for me it was another a lots and lots of i don't think i had in this last part of december a single book that went below an a minus so um the final book that I finished up for the month is uh, Truman Capote's A Christmas Memory. And I just listened to this uh, being read by Truman Capote to a live audience with my daughter, Kasha. We listened to it last night. And it was just kind of the perfect little wrap up to our time together. She flew out this morning and is headed back to Tennessee. But this was something that we did um, when she and her sister and brother were children, that we would do this pretty much every year. And so we picked up the picture book last night and uh, turned on Truman Capote um, on YouTube so that we could listen to him read his story. And it was, it was lovely. It was just such a precious time and such an endearing, wholesome, wondrous story. And so uh, again, strong A, A plus. And I finished out the year strong. So what is up next? So my first um, book that I'm in the middle of right now, and I won't finish it before tomorrow, it is called Half Built Garden. It is by Ruthanna Emrys, and it is kind of a sci-fi, futuristic, set in like the 2080s and is supposed to be a first contact with aliens um, slash climate discussion. 
I picked it up kind of on a whim. I was looking at library shelves and uh, came across it. I will also be picking up Tarzan of the Apes. This is by E.R. Burroughs, I think. E.R. Burroughs. And I will be reading that with Dave and Olive from Book Blather. And we planned on doing this ages ago. And uh, Tarzan is a classic that I have never read. And so I'm really looking forward to reading it with Dave and Olive. I will be taking part again in Flannery O'January. And I plan on reading uh, Habit of Being, which is letters. I've read part of it. I don't think I have read the whole thing. Um, it's quite a large tome. And so I will be doing that. And then I think I'm going to try to read Wise Blood also because that's the group read. And I have not read Wise Blood for many, many years. And so I think I'm gonna to try to fit that one in also. It is a short novel, so it shouldn't be too hard to fit in. And then also a book that I have had on hold that I'm still waiting for it to come in is book three in Nora Roberts' Dragonheart Legacy series. It is called The Choice and I, um, put it on hold at the end of November. So I will be reading that if it comes in in January because I am really anxious to wrap up that series. But I have two books that I have that I am thinking I probably want to read also. One of them is Plutarch's Lives and this is by Plutarch. And the, I have wanted to read this. This is the funniest reason, but when I was a little girl, I watched a musical called Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. And Millie, who is the first one to become a bride to the first brother, is on her way home after getting married and she is very proud of the fact that she has two books. One is the Bible and the other is Plutarch's Lives. Both of them were left to her by her parents. And ever since I saw that as a little girl, I thought if there was a book that was that important to somebody, then it must be a really good book. And so I, I know absolutely nothing about it. I just want to read it. I think that's the snowplow. <laughs> I just want to read it and uh, see what all of the fuss was about. And then the last one is Arrows of the Queen. This is by Mercedes Lackey. And I've been wanting to read Mercedes Lackey books for quite some time. Uh, again, just ones that I have known about that have been on my radar for many years that I've never gotten to. So I'm thinking that maybe I'll pick up Arrows of the Queen in January also. So that is everything on my list. Um, let me know if you have read any of the books that I finished up in December and what your thoughts were about them. I especially want to know people's thoughts about The Lost Metal. I want to know people's thoughts about uh, The Last Uncharted Sky. If you guys have read the Risen Kingdom series by Craddock, and because um, as far as I know, it's just, it's just Leslie and I, uh, I haven't heard anybody else talking about this series. So if you haven't, if you have read it, I would love to know your thoughts about it also. I hope that you all had a wonderful holiday season. I will be back very soon with my little end of year tag for the books that I loved and the books that I didn't. And thanks for joining me today. And I will see you in the next video, everybody. Bye.